You are watching KVU 25 News Now at 10. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Adam Seibel. Friday at around noon, Victoria Police Department responded to the 100 block of Cozy Circle Drive for a call regarding an injured child. The child was transported to an out of town hospital and is in stable condition. This is an ongoing investigation. Officials in states and cities along the southern border are bracing for what could be a record number of migrants arriving this month. The crisis being felt in cities from coast to coast, including New York City, which is updating its policy as it continues to deal with thousands of migrants seeking shelter. The number of people showing up at the southern U.S. border is on track to surpass previous monthly totals. According to Customs and Border Protection data, Border Patrol made more than 181,000 apprehensions along the southern border in August, up from more than 132,000 in July. Mexico's biggest railroad company resumed operations after it temporarily halted trains after it said so many migrants were hitching rides it was unsafe to move. Families, many with young children climbing on board, tossing belongings on the train, handing up small children. The Biden administration authorizing an additional 800 troops be sent to the border to help deal with the crisis. The city of El Paso only has so many resources and we have come to but we look at a breaking point right now. El Paso's mayor says the number of migrants has escalated faster than his city was prepared for, saying more than 2,000 were looking to come across Saturday alone. We had conversations with mayors from other cities that uh, we're looking hopefully to be able to coordinate with them. Migrants are being bused from Texas to cities across the country, including Los Angeles, Denver, Chicago, and New York. Uh, every individual that boards one of those buses is going voluntarily. They, they sign a form stating that they're going uh, voluntarily to the destination of their choice. Many of them are coming from Venezuela. President Biden offering temporary protected status to nearly 500,000 Venezuelans already in the U.S., allowing them to legally find work. They want to work. They want to contribute to of uh, the American experience and American dream. New York City, which has been overwhelmed by increasing numbers of migrants for months and will soon receive two more buses that left El Paso Saturday, updating its policy on city-run facilities, issuing 30-day notices to some adult asylum seekers to transition to alternate housing to help lessen the strain on the city's shelter system. Lionel Moyes, ABC News, New York. Part of Governor Abbott's plan to combat illegal immigration has involved busing migrants across the country to sanctuary cities. So sanctuary cities is a municipality that limits or denies its cooperation with the national government in enforcing immigration law. Texas has bused more than 9,700 migrants to our nation's capital since April of last year, over 7,900 migrants to New York City since August 5th, and then more than 2,300 migrants to Chicago since August 31st and more than 1,500 migrants to Philadelphia since November of last year and over 160 to Denver. Some have also been sent to Los Angeles. So Goliad County Sheriff Roy Boyd, who we talked to earlier this week, said he's in favor of this move to move migrants around the country. I think that the move by Governor Abbott to bus people to other uh, you know, states such as New York was was genius because it was the one thing that finally brought to light the totality of what is going on with regards to the numbers and by governor abbott sending those people to those sanctuary locations it opened their eyes because for so long people were denying that this was taking place they can no longer deny it governor abbott has forced it upon them and now they have to deal with it the same as we do Operation Lone Star's website says that it fills the gaps left by the Biden administration's refusal to secure the border and that every individual who is apprehended or arrested and every ounce of drugs seized would have otherwise made their way into communities across Texas and the nation due to open border policies. Here's your viewer poll tonight. Do you agree with Governor Abbott's move to bus migrants across the country? Looks like 74% say yes, you're in favor of that move, busing migrants to sanctuary cities, and 27% say no, you disagree with that move. Well, thank you all for voting, and as always, come to crossroadstoday.com slash vote to participate. And large groups of migrants continuing to overwhelm the border patrol agents as they pour into the Texas border towns. More than 8,000 migrants turned up in the city of Eagle Pass this week. An international bridge remained closed Friday as agents were reassigned to handle the large influx. However, officials with the Union Pacific Railroad said the track would open 
tonight at midnight as roughly 2,400 rail cars were unable to move on both sides of the border. In response to the unfolding crisis, the mayor of Eagle Pass issued a disaster declaration and Governor Abbott has deployed the Texas National Guard and Department of Public Safety troopers to address the situation. Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas took part in a visit with the president of Honduras in McAllen, where he warned that a looming government shutdown would force Border Patrol agents to work without pay as illegal border crossings are on the rise. All right, Howie, so you told me today's the official day of fall. Howie even had the exact time. I think he said 2.40 a.m. Uh, now you got, I think it was 2.50, but hey, re really close. To, you know, it's close enough, but Adam and I were talking a few hours ago. It didn't feel like fall today. Very much on the hot side. Heat indices pushing us up into the hundreds, 105, 106 degrees. Now here's our ambient temperatures. Hey, we're staying above average, still staying in the mid 90s, but there is a front coming our way. It might cools down a little bit and could bring us some showers, but more than likely we're going to continue with these temperatures staying above average. We do drop to just 77 overnight under mostly clear skies. We'll talk more about that front that's headed our way that could bring us showers and maybe a slight cool down coming up very soon, Adam. All right. Thanks, Howie. 8 million Americans under tropical storm warnings this Saturday as tropical storm Ophelia and its remnants made its way along the mid Atlantic coast storm making landfall in North Carolina, but its effects are being felt all the way up to the Del Mar Peninsula. By tomorrow, Ophelia is forecast to bring heavy rains and strong winds as far as north as New England. Ophelia making landfall in Emerald Isle, North Carolina Saturday morning as a strong tropical storm with winds of 70 miles per hour. This made landfall. You can see that area circulation right over Emerald Isle in North Carolina with winds just shy of a Cat 1 hurricane there. So we're looking at the intensity path and what it does in the next couple of days. Notice how it could remain as a tropical storm as it drives just south of Richmond, Virginia Sunday morning. Dangerous storm surge impacting North Carolina, Virginia, and and Maryland swells from Ophelia, triggering life-threatening surf and rip current conditions. The Coast Guard rescuing five people, including three children from a catamaran off the coast of North Carolina during the storm. In Wrightsville Beach, North Carolina, strong winds and big waves slamming the coasts. ABC's Victor Okendo is there. Here in Wrightsville Beach, strong winds kicking up that surf. The rain, it has just been relentless, and now some 8 million Americans are under tropical storm warning. The storm bringing with it concerns over possible tornadoes. Ophelia knocking out power to tens of thousands of customers as of Saturday afternoon. The storm now headed to the northeast from Philadelphia to New York to Boston. Rain is in the forecast through the weekend. In Wildwood, New Jersey, portions of the annual Irish Fall Festival have been moved indoors as Ophelia approaches. We'll get back out here Sunday if we can. We're going to party hard. But the Fall Festival in Margate has been canceled. Organizers saying putting up tents, stages, and inflatables are just too risky amid the severe weather. Ike Ajachi, ABC News, Washington. More than a dozen train cars went off the tracks in Maryland early this morning. This happened just after 1.30 a.m. in Prince George County and involved a CSX freight train whose cargo included plastic pellets. The company said at least 16 rail cars and one locomotive derailed. There were no injuries reported and there is no risk to the public. CSX and local authorities are working to remove the derailed train cars. The cause of that incident is under investigation. Grab your cell phone and scan this QR code. That's a quick response code to download the free Crossroads Today app, which you can watch us anytime, anywhere, and get breaking news alerts and vote in our viewer polls. You can learn all about our ongoing contests right there on the app, and you can submit news tips and photos. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Crossroads Today. Hit the like button and click the notification bell. And stay with us coming up. The historic auto worker strike has expanded to more locations. It's fall and cold fronts are moving our way. We'll talk more about it coming up in just a little bit.
Now to the historic auto workers strike expanding to more locations as President Biden accepts the UAW's invitation saying he'll join striking workers on the picket line. We are the union! We are the union! This morning, the United Auto Workers back on the picket lines as President Biden prepares to join the striking workers in solidarity next week. No Friday, the union expanding their targeted strike, asking workers at 38 GM and Stellantis parts distribution facilities in 20 states from California to Florida to walk off the job after a stalemate with the two automakers. It's going to not only affect the company and all of us workers that are going to be on $500 a week, but it's also going to affect the consumer. The customers will be waiting for car parts to get their cars fixed and they're going to be sitting. In a statement, Stellantis saying it'll continue to bargain in good faith and that the company presented a competitive offer, but the union never responded. Ford notably not affected by the strike expansion. UAW President Sean Fain saying the automaker made some progress in critical areas like cost of living increases, profit sharing, and job security during layoffs. We do want to recognize that Ford is showing that they're serious about reaching a deal. Still, Ford saying, quote, we have more work ahead of us before we can reach an agreement. The workers are asking the automakers for, among other things, a 40 percent pay raise over four years, a four day work week and job security. Brendan Dawson works at the Stellantis parts distribution plant in Romulus, Michigan, and says he didn't want to go on strike, but understands that he had to. I'm a single parent. I had to raise my daughter working a shift from 5 p.m. to 4 a.m. It's not fair. It's really corporate greed. They making the money. They can pay us. Two people were hurt in a shootout with SWAT officers in Indianapolis Friday night. Police and SWAT officers responded to a report of an armed robbery just before 9 p.m. and later spotted a car matching the description of the suspect near Lucas Oil Stadium. Officers then initiated a pursuit prevention technique to stop the suspects from fleeing. IMPD says that's when a passenger in the car started firing a weapon at officers. Officers returned fire, striking both the passenger and the driver of the vehicle. Both victims, a male and a female, were transported to the hospital in critical condition. The police department says no officers were injured and there was no one at Lucas Oil Stadium at the time of that shooting. The officers who fired at the suspects have been placed on administrative leave pending an internal investigation per IMPD protocol in any officer involved shooting. First responders were on the scene of a home explosion that left one New Jersey house heavily damaged Friday night. The West Milford Police Department says the explosion happened around 9 p.m. Friday. Five people were airlifted to local hospitals to be treated for their injuries. Their conditions currently not listed. An additional person was on the scene but refused medical treatment. The cause of that explosion is unknown and under investigation. For more on today's news stories, come to CrossroadsToday.com. Don't forget to submit your birthday wishes. Carolina Estrain will read them live on 25 News Now Sunrise. And you can submit a local military hero so we can recognize them. Are the weather gods watching? It's fall and here comes a cold front. Well, we're going to find out. We'll talk about it coming up in just a few minutes.
All right, welcome to fall, everybody. Here we are, first day, autumn equinox. So equal length of days dispersed across the world, across the planet, across Earth. Yes, so our first day of fall, but it didn't feel like fall today. We were still on the very hot side. So yes, Adam and I talked about it earlier, uh, roughly 2, okay, 2.50 a.m. Central Standard Time. Fall began, so I don't know if we're going to quite see these leaves leaves anytime soon like that. you got to go a little bit north here in Texas. We saw our, what did, what did uh, Don say? Our, our, our leaves, uh, they don't turn, they burn. So that's about what we have here in Texas. So, okay, now our days will start to beget, become shorter, losing about a minute a day until we hit the spring equinox uh, about six months from now. So temperatures are going to stay above average. Slight rain chances and a cold front's coming soon. We're going to break that all down right now. But today, 98 degrees. So even above average for what if it was still August, we're in September, 98. Our average now just down to 89 degrees. But hey, back in 1925, we were as warm as 101 degrees. All right, I should have probably took this one off, but earlier today, the advisories were about where my hand was. But tomorrow, we have a little bit of moisture. We have the hot temperatures. We could see temperatures 105 to 110 with the real feel. So we might have some heat advisories for tomorrow. This is what we did today. They stayed just out of the viewing area to the north as well. But hey, we might see those tomorrow. So it could be another very, very hot one for the second day of fall. Uh, dew points. All right, right around 80 or on the coast, you get away from the water, low to mid 70s. So a stuffy, uncomfortable feel. Last night didn't feel too bad with a little bit of a, a breeze, but hey, still very stuffy out there. Here's our future feel like. So we are still going back over the 105, 106 degree range as we move closer to October or into fall, still staying above average much like we were, well, not exactly like we were over the summer, but still above average and on the hot side. Here's what we got for Sunday. Look at that, 108 degrees potentially tomorrow for our heat indices. So yeah, we're gonna have those heat advisories more than likely. Then we start to cool down as the week moves along. A front comes in, it's gonna drop us down, but still very much on the hot side. If we lose six, seven, eight degrees, that's not really changing what we're wearing, what we're doing. Here's the front that I talked about. Okay, high pressure still holding a grip on us. Probably won't see any showers through Sunday night due to high pressure. The high is going to slowly start to move off, and that's going to open the door for this boundary, including storms in the Midwest and the plains will help push this boundary our way. Now, what's going to happen is this boundary is either going to push all the way through or really come to us and then move backwards again. Either way, what's going to happen is Rain chances will start to decrease later in the week. But for now, moisture is building out in front of this boundary. And then as the boundary moves in, you get some lift along the boundary. You get the sea breeze moving inland. That could trigger us, trigger some showers. So we've got a couple days where 30, 40 percent chance of showers in the Monday, Tuesday, maybe into Wednesday time frame. But then we'll head to drier times again later on in the week. High, high pressure will move in and there'll be less moisture available. Here's our future tracker, really, until the boundary gets here. Here's what we got, you see these showers. A lot of this activity looks to stay off to the northeast, closer to Houston, but hey, we might get a few showers, but again, nothing really in the way of a washout. Here's our marine forecast. Here's what we got. So look at the water now dropping into the 80s for fall. We are 90, 95 most of the summer. Uh, seas two to three feet, that will keep our bays on the choppy side. All right, Ophelia, you saw a story earlier, but yeah, on the East Coast, bringing rain and winds, affecting 8 million plus people. Yeah, there could be some flooding. Now, Ophelia is going to eventually move out back into the ocean, but here's what we got. Felipe doing the same thing. That is going to stay, it's a tropical storm right now. Felipe is going to stay out in the middle of the Atlantic. And then we have another little disturbance down there. It's a ways away, and at the moment, doesn't look to uh, further strengthen. We'll be in the 80s this evening, overnight dropping down to 77 under mostly clear skies. And then for tomorrow, I showed you a moment ago, we'll be 95. Heat indices could be pushing 108. Might feel good a little bit on that breezy side. But looking ahead, the boundary comes down. It's going to increase our rain chances with moisture building up along the front and out in front of it. And then, hey, if it comes through, it knocks us down maybe a little uh, closer to average, but still staying above 90. And heat indices, heat indices potentially staying around that 100 degree mark. For more weather, news, and sports, you go to our app. That's at CrossroadsToday.com. That is free with any Android and iPhone. And now, we go to Sports with Zach. Well, another week of high school football has come and gone. We'll recap some of those games coming up in sports.
Well, very quickly, this high school football season just got a lot more intense. Many teams around the area beginning district play, starting with Ganado and Shiner. The Indians marched into Shiner, trying to beat the Comanches for the first time in about a decade. Bryce Ullman going to hit his man halfway through the first quarter to go up 7 to nothing. The Indians led 14 nothing at the half, would end up winning 28 to 6. Their defense allowing less than 10 points per game. Shiner falls to 0-5. They travel to Bloomington next week. Both of those teams looking for district win number one on the year. The Quarrel Gobblers remain white hot went into Beeville and a battle of unbeatens came out on top. The Gobblers moved to either five or four. No, depending on whether or not you count the Cal Allen game, and I believe they do. They have the week off to prepare for Giddings. That will be a home game. That will also be district game number one. A team that Quarrel beat week one, but a team that looks totally different now. The El Campo Rice Birds. Look at this run here. Refusing to go down. Oliver Miles, who is a three star Texas Tech commit, has come back healthy and really helped these guys flip a switch. He's an incredible athlete who was projected to win offensive MVP of the district. He's got them on a three game winning streak as they get ready for a tough Bay City team. The East Titans got the win, so too did their Victoria counterparts, the West Warriors. It was their first win of the year, came at a great time. They look to go 2-0. They have an early week. They will take on Corpus Christi Moody on Thursday. Hallettsville got the win, as did Yoakum football and volleyball. Yoakum traveled to Edna, winning in three sets. Addison Picard had 10 kills. Diana Phillips had 14 kills and 11 digs. Macy Blakeney had 30 assists to go along with nine digs, doing a lot of dirty work. The Lady Bulldogs have won eight in a row. And there's no easy way to say this, but the Houston Astros are falling apart before our eyes. They are in by far and away the easiest part of their schedule and can't buy a win. The Astros now clinging to a half game lead over the Seattle Mariners for the final AL wildcard spot, the Rangers. Now with a game and a half lead with eight games left in the season. But maybe this will bring a smile to some people's face. Jonathan Brooks out of Hallettsville torching Baylor this evening. Here's one of his big runs. It's a 40-yard touchdown to get the scoring started in Waco. He had over 100 yards on the evening. And today, Hallettsville's Lane Gerke and Referial's Ernest Campbell travel to College Station on a visit, and they got a great view of what the 12th man was like. Jimbo Fisher taking that term literal, standing out on the field. Now, unfortunately, that was El Campo's Ruben Owens who fumbled there, but uh, he's going to be just fine. And I thought this was worth mentioning. Tidehaven's defense has played four games. They have not allowed a single point yet this season. That's it for your sports. Adam, back to you. All right, thanks, Zach. Stay with us. Coming up, the Victoria Police Department showed up and showed out this evening for the National Night Out kickoff party. National Night Out kickoff party was this evening. The Victoria Police Department and all their friends were there for a celebration featuring entertainment for our area youth with food, a foam party, horseback rides, 
and more. It took place at the Children's Pavilion in Riverside Park. So National Night Out, this was just the kickoff party. So the actual National Night Out will be Tuesday, October 3rd between 6 p.m. and 9 p.m. Since 1984, National Night Out has been enhancing relationships between the community and law enforcement while providing a great opportunity to bring police and neighbors together under positive circumstances. So they're hosting block parties. They encourage you to contact the police department if you want to uh, host a block party yourself. So get out there and have some fun. Those are, those are bubbles? It looks like it. When you first came out, I thought it was snow. Oh, yeah, snow. Uh, <laughs> hey, first day of fall, bam. You guys got snow already, already for the first day. That, 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 that viewer poll people were laughing at, do you think they'll bring cooler weather? There, there it there is. There it is, right snow there. Snow right there. Well, <laughs> we got a shot because here's that cold front coming down, but I think the air is going to get modified a little bit. Don't think it's going to drop temperatures too much, but we could see some showers, and with the added cloud cover, that will keep our temperatures a little bit on the cooler side, but after this boundary either clears us or moves back away from us, our rain chances will start to decrease. So this evening will be in the 80s, overnight dropping down to just 77 degrees, about 11 degrees above average. And then tomorrow, 95 heat indices could push us to 108. And we can see some winds gusting about 20 miles per hour. That might help a little bit. But looking ahead, there's the boundary. All right, temperatures might drop a little bit, but for the most part, we're staying above average with a few decent rain chances during the early part of the week. All right. Well, thanks, Zach. Thanks, Howie. And happy first day of fall to everyone watching. Have a great night, everyone.